Huh, the car that was here. Did you move it? Oh, that car is already sold out? <laughs> Too bad for you. Why? About five minutes after the phone call, the store manager came running over with his face bright red. Hey, what have you done to me? Why would you call the headquarters? Take responsibility for this! Trouble Busters! Hey, wait! I refuse to go home until I can get that car in my hands! What's your problem? You're annoying! I also really struggled to find that car. It can't just back down that easily! My name is Alan. Due to a certain reason, today I had arrived at a luxury car dealer, Trobus, to purchase a specific high-end car. Uh, I don't normally ride in the car, so it would make me nervous to go into a regular car shop. But I'm definitely out of place in a luxury car dealership like this. But I've decided that I'm definitely gonna buy that car. I had extraordinary determination as I walked into the car dealer. Excuse me, if you're looking for a small van, they carry those at the used car shop around the corner. What? Uh, no, no, that's not it. I'm not looking for a small van. I came here because I wanted the car that you have here. A car from here? Yes. A baggy hoodie and dirty jeans that look like they haven't been washed in years. <laughs> and those audio sneakers that the peasants must love. What? That was very direct and rude. Was this not okay? No. Oh, apologies for the delayed introduction. I'm the store manager of this car dealership. My name is Richard. By the way, what kind of car are you looking for today? If you're looking for a low-priced car with good fuel capacity, then they use car shop around the corner. Like I said, I'm not interested in a regular car. I'm looking to purchase this blue car that's in the display window. Huh? <laughs> I apologize if this is rude, but that is an extremely expensive car. Oh, really? Normally I ride my bike, so I don't know that much about cars. But I understand that it's amazing. <laughs> a bicycle? <laughs> So what if I ride a bicycle? You do realize I'm a customer. You've been very rude this whole time. Oh yeah? You're the one that's being rude. What? Why? You're getting angry with me. Listen, I'm not that bored either. Unlike someone like you, who was probably held back twice in college, finally graduated but couldn't find a job, and is working part-time at a pub with no money and all the free time in the world. Now, if you understand, please leave. Shoo, shoo. Uh, hey! I'm definitely not leaving until I get that car in my hands! What's your problem? You're so annoying! I also really struggled to find that car. I can't just back down that easily! As the store manager and I were arguing, a customer that looks like he had a lot of money walked into the dealership. When he saw that customer, he backed down a little bit and he said this to me. Okay then, we can make our reservation for you for now. Please sign the paperwork over here. Why did you change all of a sudden? In the next moment, seeing him go over to the wealthy looking customer with a smile from ear to ear. Ah, I see. He thinks that I'm naive. I was irritated by this guy who was judging a customer based on their appearance. But I was somehow able to sign a reservation for the car. So I was relieved for the time being and left the store. In order to sign the official contract, I went to the shop. But then I looked in the window and realized that the blue Porsche was no longer displayed. Huh? The car that was here, did you move it? Oh, that car is already sold out. <laughs> Too bad for you. <laughs> now, you peasant, you can leave. W why? But I made the reservation. <laughs> a reservation is just a reservation. Do you understand the meaning of a reservation? There are always people that make a reservation and then back out. Especially customers like you. That's why we prioritize the customer that can make the purchase right away, and we sold it to them. No, no way. Even though I went through so much to find it. Do you even know the price of that card to begin with? I'm pretty sure you've missed a zero in it. That would be impossible for a part-time loser like you. Please give up and go home. I won't. I'm definitely gonna get that car. Do something about it. Ah, you're so annoying. You're disrupting my business right now. Should I call the police for you? Are you sure you want that? In this situation, as a person making the complaint, you're definitely at a disadvantage. Making a complaint? Well, obviously. Just like that and walking into this high-end car dealership and causing a scene. From the outside, you are at a clear disadvantage. You... you bastard! Oh, sheesh. First of all, why are you so fixated on that car anyway? Why can't you just go and get a minivan for yourself? No, that car is special. The reason why I wanted to get that car no matter what was in order to make my dad's wish come true, as he was ill in the hospital right now. I know my body better than anybody else. I don't have much time left to live. My father said that. 
And with this, I didn't have any way to make my dad's wish come true anymore. I felt deep anger inside of me. And at the same time, I was furious with this guy who was judging the customers solely based on their appearance. And then, as I was about to give up and leave the car dealership, one employee came over to talk to me. Um, my name is Melanie. I was listening to your conversation earlier. I have felt the depth of your love towards your father, and I was very moved. Th thank you very much. And despite such a devastating story, I apologize for how terribly rude Richard was. That's not something for you to apologize about. But having someone like that as a store manager must not be good for the reputation of this store. Yes, that's right. Richard always judges people based on their parents and belittles them. Don't you get complaints to the company headquarters? Richard's very good at making excuses. He treats those complaints as false claims. And because the headquarters can't confirm the truth, there's nothing more they can do about it. What an unfair guy he is. Yes, I also have a lot of thoughts about Richard, but... It must be difficult to work here. <laughs> Mr. Allen, it may not be my place to make this request of a customer, but there is something that I'd like to talk to you about. What? Me? Talk to me about what? Actually, this is. And that. What? And so... <laughs> Uh, me? Yes, is there any way that I can ask for your help? I... I'll do it, if that's the case, and I would be ready to help. Uh, thank you very much. I'm very grateful. Apparently, he was doing all kinds of things behind the scenes. I couldn't just leave somebody like that. This evil man who belittles people and does whatever he wants. I'm gonna teach him a lesson. I'm not gonna forgive him. It's a trouble buster! Welcome! Uh, oh, you again. What do you want this time? I still can't accept the situation about that car. I was the first one to make a reservation for it, so I want you to do something about it. Ugh, so annoying. This is exactly why I don't like low-class people. That car has already made its journey towards a celebrity owner. If you don't cut it out already, I'm seriously gonna call the police. But then, Miss Melanie came over and handed Richard the phone, saying it was a call from the headquarters. Yes, this is Richard. But what? Yes, yes. Oh, no, but, but that... well, yes. About five minutes after the phone call, the store manager came running over with his face bright red. Hey! What have you done to me? Why would you call the headquarters? That's gonna cost my promotion! Take responsibility for this! What? What else was I supposed to do? Because I couldn't accept your attitude. And you better watch me. I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get that car. First, I made a claim to the company headquarters about the store manager's attitude. You bastard! Even though you're just a low-class person, how dare you tarnish my career like that! Oh dear. Well, I'm sorry about that. But are you sure it's just gonna be a little scratch in your career? Perhaps more than just your career is gonna be tarnished? Huh? What the hell are you saying? It was at that moment. Richard, I've been listening this whole time. But what kind of language are you using towards a customer? What? what? The, the, the director Michael! Why? Wasn't I just speaking to you on the phone? Yeah, I was sitting in my car in the parking lot this whole time, and I heard everything through Melanie's cell phone. But, Melanie, what is going on? Even though I wanted to report this to the higher-ups, I couldn't find any evidence, so this time I had Mr. Allen's help, and I wanted somebody from the headquarters to see the problem that is you. You... you bastard! How dare you betray me! This is why you can't get any rich customers because of you! What are you saying? That's because you always come in and steal any customer that looks like they have any money. <laughs> any customer that you think is gonna boost your reputation, you take, and you send customers you don't care about to Miss Melanie. Isn't that right? How petty. That's... that's none of my business! Director, it's not what it looks like! There is an explanation for all of this! Explanation? Interesting. Well, why don't we hear it then? What kind of explanation? It has been 12 years since I started working at this company, and I've been helping to develop this company since the beginning. And within that, in order to efficiently increase our sales, I recognized that it was necessary to prioritize customers that had a certain level of salary or assets. Mm-hmm. And then? And then, if I sought out these customers that looked like they had money and handled them, I proactively increased the sales of this shop. Aha. Uh -huh. But pardon my words, but look at this man, with his dirty appearance. Then he's just putting on a front and crying out nonsense from his own delusions. He refused to listen to my warnings and keeps coming back. And not only that, but he's demanding that I bring out a car that has already been sold, claiming that it's his car and refusing to listen. <laughs> I was also just at my wit's end, not knowing what to do with him. In order to not damage the dignity of this store, I was just in the middle of putting my career on the line to get rid of this piece of trash from our shop. Piece of trash, huh? What a terrible way to say it. 
How dare you speak to a customer like that and call him a piece of trash to his face? Well then, let me ask you one thing. What is that that's being stored in the factory in the back? Oh, uh, that. Well, that's, uh, that's right. Uh, this guy was being so persistent that I thought I should hide it in order to make him give up. If you know that he's just putting on the front, then there's no need to go out of your way to hide it. Well, that was because uh, I didn't want the car to be dirty by this guy's jeans. But I don't know when they were last washed. If I didn't hide it, he might try to take it for a test drive when I wasn't looking, right? I see. Melanie, bring me the materials we talked about. Yes, sir. M materials? Richard, do you know what this is? That's... Uh, that's... Uh, the file with all of the copies of the quotations in it. Why do you have that, Commissary? Actually, I received confirmation from Melanie that there were a few incidents where the invoice and the actual contract financials weren't matching up. I did a little investigation and... I investigation Yeah, there was a very high possibility that someone is committing fraud here. So just in case... I interesting. And how were the results? They were crystal clear. It's a crime. The invoices were being written higher than they should be. And yet the amount that was being reported to the company was the market price which means that the customers were paying more than the price that was designated by the company. And not only that, but there was one more suspicious point. One more? And what could that be? The cars that were purchased under those circumstances. Every single one was paid in full in cash. Is this a coincidence? I, I wonder how that could be. Uh, strange things do happen. So who on earth would commit such a fraud with what intention? Isn't it strange, Mr. Richard? Well, what a ridiculous guy. I guess bad people do exist in the world. Ah, <sighs> what a shame. I made sure to contact the police about this. What? B police What is it? You seem very panicked. Does any of this ring about you? Uh, no, of course not. <laughs> what a disgrace. I hope he gets caught soon. By the way, Richard, who are you trying to sell that car to? What? Uh, well, well, uh, that was, um, uh, a friend of mine has a business owner uh, that said that he wanted it, and then... Is that so? And that friend of yours, what kind of business does he have? Uh, um, uh, in the architecture industry. The architecture industry? Uh, no, I, I meant the medical industry. Medical industry? Some university hospital somewhere. University hospital somewhere? I think he was, uh, something like the director or something there. You liar! Ah! You were sneaking that car to somebody on the side, weren't you? And not only that, but for higher than the company price. And you were going to pocket the rest of that difference. I have no idea what you're talking about. There's no way that I would ever do such a thing. We've already done the investigation. And this, it's not just an internal company problem. The police have said that in the worst case scenario, that there may be gangs in the black market involved. And they are acting accordingly. We've already researched your wrongdoings at this point. Don't think your lies are gonna go through. Gangs? Black market? What an exaggeration! You don't need to take it so far as to get the place involved! No! Given the opportunity, we are going to have them weed out all of the illegal activity in the company. You better be ready. Uh, it's a misunderstanding! This isn't what it looks like. Mr. Allen, why could you say something on my behalf? Oh, that's right. Uh, that car. I think it would really suit you after all. So I can cancel the sale to my friend. All right, so uh, why don't you tell him that uh, calling the police is too much? Huh, <laughs> ignore. Uh, Miss, Miss Melanie, from now on, I promise not to steal all of the wealthy customers. If anything, I don't care if I just become your supporting role. You can use me as a stepping stone, and you should become the store manager of this branch. So please, please, I beg you, please tell him that he doesn't need to get the police involved. Ignore. What? What do you mean by ignore? You need to say something! What happened to your mouth? Well, with this, that car isn't gonna be taken by anybody else. And now I can purchase it without any regrets, so I'm very satisfied. Are you kidding me? The price of that car isn't something that a low-class poor man like you could ever afford. Mr. Richard, given the situation, you're still gonna say such things? Looks like you don't have any regrets. I am! I'm sorry! Well, it's fine. Once I actually buy it, I'm sure he'll finally- What? Actually buy it? As he said that, I pulled out a certain credit card from my wallet. Miss Melanie, can I pay with this card? Of course, in one payment. What? This card is- Wow, could it be? No way! Gold! <laughs> but also, I haven't had anywhere to use it, so I haven't pulled it out of my wallet in over a year. 
Mr. Allen, pardon me for asking, but what kind of work do you do? My job? Well, that... I am a salary man, but as a second job, I'm a content writer. And I have a reputation of a lot of businesses saying that if Allen writes an article about their product, that it'll definitely sell. And I was actually a popular content writer that has major businesses from all over, begging me to work with them. Uh, are you serious? Well then, why are you wearing such dirty clothes? Oh, actually, I grew up in a single father household. That's why I never once lived in luxury. And then, I didn't feel the need to buy anything more. I still live in a two-bedroom apartment, and I only have the bare minimum of electronics at home. Of course, I don't need a car either, so I don't have to pay for gasoline. That's how I was living. So before I knew it, the money just kept piling in. Wow, amazing! So jealous! Give me some! So you're what they call a minimalist. Richard, are your eyes just empty holes? What happened to that self-proclaimed skill of yours? That you said you could take one look at a customer and judge whether they're actually wealthy enough to buy the car or not. Uh, no, well, that's... Uh, <laughs> In the end, what this means is that you can't judge people based on their appearance. Maybe you should have actually spoken to me, so that you could see what was on the inside. Especially because I was fully ready to buy the car. You can't say anything back. <laughs> Shut up! In that case, you should have come dressed more appropriately. What is this harassment? Huh? Oh, I know. This must be a prank. Oh, where is it? Where are the cameras? I know the crew are hiding somewhere. Come on, come out, cast and crew. There's no crew hiding, but I'm sure the police will be arriving soon. What? Please, wait, wait, please wait. Oh, this is so dramatic. In the end, the car was sold anyway, so it's not like there's been any losses on the company side. If anything, I think that this should be the opportunity to be thanking me for all the cars that I've sold for the company until now. The people that you were selling those cars to on the side could be people from the black market. Do you not understand that this isn't just a problem with you? It would be a problem for our entire company. Ah, it's, it's not such a big deal. Not only that, but these precious cars that have been passed down so carefully from owner to owner, we don't know who or where they ended up. And yet you're gonna call yourself a luxury car dealer. You should be ashamed. I I'm very sorry. I was too shallow. I swear I'm gonna change and I won't do anything like this moving forward. So please, anything about the police. Don't you realize it's too late already? Because look, they're already here. <sighs> you must be Richard. We're from the police department. Will you please come back with us to the station? No, I don't want to. I haven't done anything wrong. All I did was sell it to people that said they wanted it. I haven't done anything wrong. Yeah, yeah, we can hear the details back at the station, so just get in the police car. I don't want to! Help me! I'm innocent! That guy's the one that did everything wrong! He walked in here in such dirty clothes! That's why this is all happening! I didn't do anything wrong! I'm definitely not wrong! And so, for the full police investigation, Richard was arrested and taken to the station. He's really lost his mind. Even after all that, he didn't seem to have any sense of guilt. You're right, but I'm glad. With this, I'm able to get that car, and it looks like this shop has been cleansed of the evil. Mr. Allen, I'm terribly sorry about this incident. I don't know how we can possibly make it up to you as the responsible party. Not at all. It was a very good experience for me too. A, a good experience? What do you mean? As much as I say that, I don't care for nice things, and I don't care what people think about me. I should at least pay attention to the way that I present myself. From now on, I'm gonna go by the right TPO. And I think I'm gonna wear more appropriate clothing. I'm sure anything would look great on you, Mr. Allen. <laughs> yes, and I'm sure that Porsche will look great on you as well. <laughs> Do you think so? <laughs> After that, luckily for Richard, there was no connection to the black market. But he was found guilty of embezzlement, and he was given a suspended sentence. However, within the car industry, he was blacklisted. Apparently, he will never be able to work in this industry ever again. Even though he looked for a new job, with a criminal record, he wasn't able to find any ideal jobs. So now, he's apparently working multiple day jobs to make ends meet. Damn it, damn it, that bastard. If he has money, then he should have dressed more nicely. Hey, why are you muttering and working so slow? You need to carry this too. Uh, it's so heavy. On the other hand, as for me, I was able to make my father's dream of many years come true, of driving a Porsche. Well, to talk about the results, apparently my father's illness was just a stomach ulcer. He's such a dramatic prankster. But even still, I was really happy that I was able to make my father's dream come true of riding a Porsche. 
I gave that car to my dad as a gift, and went back to being fully satisfied with my minimalist life. After this incident, I did think to put a little more thought into my appearance, but in the end, what's the most important was on the inside. From now on, I'm gonna continue on with my simple lifestyle. It's a trouble buster!